I heard some rustling outside my tent, my heart started to race, but I had my knife and bear spray, so I took the safety of the spray, and unbuttoned the sheath on the knife. People who spend a lot of time in nature, or far from other people, what was the creepiest and the most unexplainable thing you saw? Brushing my teeth in backwards Utah. We had dug this sort of pit thing. It's the middle of the night. No light pollution. So dark as hell. So there I am brushing my teeth over the big hole in the ground. And I get a very weird feeling that I'm being watched. Like right across from me. Nobody else was awake. So I said, F this poop and went back to the tent. Next morning I see huge F and paw prints right on the other side of the hole. I had been standing two feet from a mountain lion. I was with an outdoor group, back when I was a teenager. We were in the western US for two weeks, and planned to spend one week rafting and the next hiking through the canyons. One night during the first week, the weather was beautiful, and we all decided to skip hitching tents and just sleep under the stars. After a few hours of telling stories about growing up and where we all came from, We'd all only just met, we drifted off to sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of shuffling. I looked around, but it was so dark that I couldn't really see anything, so I just assumed the sound was people tossing and turning in their sleeping bags. I had a dream that night, that I was dragging myself across the floor of my kitchen, because my legs wouldn't work. It was kinda eerie, but when I woke up, I didn't really think much about it, until I sat up and saw where I was. My sleeping bag as well as everyone else's in my group, had been dragged at least 10 feet towards the riverbank. You could actually see the trail on the ground, where each person was dragged from where they were originally sleeping. We were all freaked out of course. First jumping to the possibility of someone in the group playing a practical joke. But honestly everyone seemed equally spooked, and no one in the group remembers waking up and seeing anything. Additionally, each person had drag marks behind their sleeping bag, meaning that if it was someone in our group, They'd have had to weigh their own bag down with something heavy, and drag it to leave a mark matching everyone else's. Totally possible but definitely a little extra. We spent the next week and a half in the wilderness together, and no one ever fessed up. Other than hearing a few weird noises echoing through the canyon, nothing super spooky happened after that. I still get creeped out thinking about that night though. The Death Tally Sign in Hanakapiai Beach This is a beach in Kauai, Hawaii. You have to hike a couple miles in the mountains to get to it. The beach is narrow and surrounded by mountains, so any sudden tide change can sweep people off. Right before the beach, there's a sign with a death tally. A friend of mine was there casually and saw someone getting swallowed by the ocean in front of them. When I was in Vietnam, there was all these old abandoned houses by the coast. Essentially a ghost town. Sometimes at night I heard a woman call out someone's name. This abandoned town was taken over by the forest, and in the morning it was great for taking photos. I remember focusing on this one home that looked bombed or burned down, and out of the corner of my eye, saw a shadowy figure sink into the ground. Scared me. The next day I got the balls to go back and noticed an open well. I admit, I was too scared to look inside. I've received a few messages about the photos, and will share two photos I took with my phone. This was in 2016. This photo is an example of what state the homes were in. Later on during my trip I did notice there were people living nearby in a rural village. I was glad to learn there was a wild pack of boys that would roam the area during the day, which could explain hearing a woman earnestly call out at night. Here is the well. It's a bad pick, but I just wanted to document it and get out. I couldn't tell how old the buildings were, maybe 10 to 15 years or more. There was no evidence of violence, just abandonment, housewares, etc., left behind. At night I can shine a really strong flashlight into the woods behind my house. I will often see eyes staring back at me. What is creepy is, every time I see a family of animals. It is always tallest to the right and shortest to the left. And perfectly lined up in between. Just yesterday actually, my friends and I went on a hike. It was unexpectedly foggy, but we decided to still go. So foggy you could probably only see about 35 feet in front you. As we were on the hike we passed by some rural farmland and decided to take a cut through it. As we did we heard screaming. As there was lots of livestock around, cows, sheep, goats, etc., we just assumed it was maybe an animal who was in pain or just hungry. As we went down the path through the fields the screaming got closer and closer. The path came so close that the screaming was about one field northeast of us. We couldn't see what was screaming as none of us could see that well, but whatever was screaming could hear us. 
As we got into view of whatever was screaming, the screams sounded more humanoid and more frequent. So frequent as to only stop screaming to breathe. By this time the fog had lifted and you could clearly see. In the distance all I could see was a red dot, maybe a person in a red t-shirt? But after that my friends and I went back the way we came, after being too freaked out. I live in the country where there is little light pollution. On a really clear night, you can see the Milky Way, if you know where to look in the sky. Well one night in January it was freezing cold, and my dog wandered outside for a pee, and me and him are just chilling in the yard, after he pees he always barks around the yard runs around a bit and wants back in. All is going routinely normal for a while, until we both see a light in the woods, which are miles thick and are feet from my house. No houses back there, it goes left right and then blinks. And I was like, this is private property you're trespassing and my dog will bite, he's a rottweiler, my dog's hair begins to stand up and he starts growling, and he does this howl bark that hurt my ears he only does it when he sees another animal near his territory, and I stand by him and repeat myself. I grabbed a fallen limb, and throw it a few feet into the woods. Well after about 20 minutes it was nothing, so we both go back inside. Well after about 20 minutes, it was nothing so we both go back inside. Well I go to bed and he begins to bark and growl again, which annoyed me a bit because I was sleepy. He runs to the French doors to be let out. I grab my robe and slippers, and go back out with him. There was something walking around in the woods. I could hear twigs snapping and rustling. I'm pretty sure it was just some a-hole, or an animal being weird, but it was still creepy to be around, due to how silent and heavy the air became in 3 degree weather at 1 am. In terms of something specific, probably seeing several animal bones arranged in neat circles on a salt lake. More generally, there are some places where something just doesn't feel right. It's like a certain heaviness in the air. There are certain places when I'm out in the country that I just avoid. Australian indigenous cultures talk about spirits of old living in the land, sometimes in certain places it feels like you're trespassing. Can't really explain the feeling, except I listen to my gut and give them a wide berth. Pretty much the entirety of the Adirondacks can be creepy at night, despite its daytime beauty. I was camping once, and it was on a campground with campsites and outhouse bathrooms. This particular time though, there weren't many campers, and we were away from any other occupied sites, way up in the hill. I woke up with this urge to pee, in the middle of the night. The bathroom was on a hill back in the woods. You had to climb up a rock path to get to it. One side was women's, other side was men's. It had wooden doors that didn't latch. You would just pull it, and then it would slam closed. I'm inside doing my business, when I hear footsteps that are clearly human, crunching on the dirt and rocks. Then it stops. Neither the men or women door opens or slams. Silence. Then more crunching steps around the building, then they stop. You can hear everything because it's so quiet up there. I never heard the steps walk away or down the path. When I came outside the bathroom, there was no one in sight. I couldn't get back to the campsite fast enough. A number of years ago I was primitive camping with my partner and four-year-old son. The hike in took over an hour, and it started getting dark when we found our spot, so we set up camp very rapidly, and got busy settling in for the night. Nice fire, meal, evening, no issues. I woke up in the morning first and walked out of our immediate campsite, to answer nature's call, and found a giant wooden cross in a clearing. Enormous, easily double digits high. Out in the middle of nowhere. Early morning sun coming up, it was terrifying. Went back to camp and we cleared out immediately. Right or wrong, it was Florida and the word clan was echoing way too loudly in my head. My friends and I go on what we call, hobo walks. This involves going to my grandpa's house in the country, walking through the woods till we find train tracks, follow them till we get to a road, then take that road back to grandpa's. It's a known route by now to us. We were about halfway through our walk when we noticed a new path leading off of the tracks. We followed it into a clearing in the woods, and right in the middle was a deer skull. It looked like it was cleaned, and placed there with care. The path had turned into a circle around the edges of the clearing giving it a stage-like appearance. It was pretty creepy, and we got out of there fast. One of my friends took the skull, and it is currently decorating his shelf of other found bones. A few years ago. I went on a solo overnight camping trip in the mountains, in the Rocky Mountains. I hiked in about 7 miles, seeing only a few day trippers on the way in, and got to what I thought was a secluded area to set up camp. 
Typically people that hike in this area carry some sort of large firearm to defend themselves from grizzly bears, but I was only carrying bear fogger, and a 7-inch cobber combat knife. I always follow best practice when it comes to tying up food away from the campsite, which I did that night as well, but since my tent was a small one-man tent I left my backpack hanging on a tree near my tent. Anyways, at some point in the middle of the night, I heard some rustling outside my tent, my heart started to race, but I had my knife and bear spray in my sleeping bag with me, so I took the safety of the spray, and unbuttoned the sheath on the knife, and clutched them waiting for the worst to happen. There was a babbling creek nearby, so I wasn't sure if the rustling sound stopped, but I couldn't be sure. I woke in the morning alive, so I got out of tent and my bag was unzipped, but nothing was missing. I was pretty spooked, so I packed up and started to hike out, and I stopped by a little lake. I turned around, and there was this old man standing about 5 feet behind me. He said, you picked a nice camping spot last night? I noped the f out of there. I was a little relieved that I wasn't hearing things the night before, and the mystery was solved. This was while I was on a canoe trip with my dad in Algonquin Park, a huge swath of lakes, marshes and white pine forest, only accessible by canoe, just a few hours north of Toronto. After four hours of paddling and portaging, we get to a pretty ramshackle backcountry cabin that we booked for my dad's back, I guess he thought it would be better than a tent. The cabin is located in a mosquito and black fly infested marsh, which are pretty common for the area. Our first day there was pretty good, other than seeing a snake in the cabin and finding a creepy journal with some weird notes, that others left from their stays there. We had some fresh caught bass and pike for dinner, wouldn't recommend unless you're desperate. The next day we want to get a break from the bugs, and paddle to a beach on the other side of the lake. We come back late afternoon to make dinner, and notice a few things that freaked us out. The hatchet we were using to chop firewood in the morning, was gone. The cabin had been entered and it was trashed, our big water container was slashed open. There was also a trail of parted grass going through the marsh into the woods. Yet, the whole day we were on the same lake and didn't notice anyone else canoeing around that could have done it. So whoever did it, must have come from the woods by our cabin, and no animal could have opened the door. So we nope the hell out of there, pack up everything under 40 minutes and send it back to the car. Unfortunately we left at like 7 p.m., and had to spend a good hour or more paddling in the dark, to find our way back. Which is a terrible idea by the way, we spent most of the time scanning the shore for landmarks to guide our way back. We eventually made it back an hour and a half faster than the trip out, but this was probably because we just sent some of the minor rapids, instead of taking the time to portage. Definitely a memorable experience, the car drive after was also crazy, because we spent 15 minutes following a moose who wouldn't get out of our way, on a tiny dirt road, and managed to hit a deer while driving back to town on the highway. Me and my dad were definitely pretty shook after that night. Thanks for listening to Radio TTS, and special thanks to everyone who became an ice cream sandwich by subscribing to this channel. Enjoy your next camping trip in the woods, and don't forget your knife.